run the football effectively in some of their zone read game and they never got behind the chain. So winning on first and second down with a young quarterback to get third manageable situations is the recipe for success. Let's see if they can duplicate last week's performance here tonight to get them to Detroit in the Marathon MAC Championship game. Nelson will start from the shotgun and Manny Morgan to his left. And it's a give to Morgan, gets away from the first man and is gonna eke out Yards up to the 28-yard line, a gain of three on first down for Akron. Manny Morgan is their slippery scat back type. He's just five foot eight. Now he's short, but he's not small. He's got a 200-pound frame, but he's the go-to guy when they need to get those plays, especially plays in space. He can kick it into another gear. Nelson, and on the catch, it's A.J. Coney, first down for Akron. It's a gain of 12 on the slant to the 40. No, I said coming into the game how accurate uh, Cato Nelson has been. Look at where this ball is placed on the slant route. You don't have any danger of an underneath defender. Very in rhythm, accurate throw, catchable ball. Move the chains for this Akron offense. Down keeper by Nelson running for a first and more and Cato Nelson all the way into Kent State territory to the 36 and he picks up 24 what a block by Jovan Latui that right tackle that time yeah and Kent State was a man short in the box with the direct snap there to Nelson and the quarterback draw you got the lead block you block down kick out with the H back and then off Nelson goes uh, He's an exciting redshirt freshman out of the state of Florida, a runner and a thrower, dynamic player for this Akron offense. Morgan, and he's going to be hit in the backfield. And Kent State ready for him this time. It's going to be a loss of four. Marcus Moore was the first on the scene. Jim Jones helped out as well. Yeah, the right side of the offensive line, 66 Kyle Ritz, 75 Javon Latuli. Struggling at the point of attack there, allowing some penetration in the backfield. Nowhere for the runner to go there. How much has Kent State been decimated by injuries this season? Tom, we were talking to the members of the staff before the right. game, like who was going to be in in this ball game tonight? And a lot is trying to go, but still dinged up. Injuries have hit them at just about every spot across the board. Second down and long. Nelson wanted to run, had found no hole, and now he's going to chuck it deep, and that's well overthrown and out of bounds incomplete. Jim Jones is putting pressure on Nelson that time for Kent State. Well, and that brings up a third and 14. Now, that's a smart play there by Cato Nelson after he was flushed, tried to keep his eyes downfield, but just wisely throws the football away. Now, keep in mind, this is about field position now. You may not get all of this back. Get half of it back. Maybe you think about four down territory or you punt them in your defense on a long field. Longest field goal that has been converted this season for Akron has been a 48 yards. They still need more yards for that. Third and 14. Nelson with time, and he's going to take off again. Makes a nice move. Needs the 26. He has it. First down, Akron. Heads up. Just a really nice, smart play. Very heady play. Don't force the football. No reason to be risky. You go through your progression. You see him from left to right. Doesn't like what he sees. Now he uses his athleticism. Takes the front door. Fresh set of downs. Again, good situational awareness by Cato Nelson. First half of the 25. He looks back the other side. A wide open man. And that's Kobe Booker, and he's in for the touchdown. Nelson accounted for all the yards on that drive, 37 through the air. And 39 on the ground, 4-2 this season when getting the lead first. I guess this young man has no problems picking up where he left off a week ago after four touchdowns 
against Ohio. What was a win to put them in this position here tonight against their rival Kent State? Mike Kerrigan on the kickoff return for Kent State from his five-yard line and tripped up at the 28 by Trevante Junius. This is an area for Akron. Their kickoff coverage units have struggled. They did a week ago. Uh, been given up too much field position, and now we'll see Kent State Start their offensive drive on what looks to be about the 28-yard line. Good field position for the Golden Flashes. George Bolas for the first time tonight. Junior from Aurora, Ohio. The second leading rusher for this team. And their starting quarterback, Nick Holly, got hurt three games into the season. And they've gone back to Bolas, who's had some time throughout this program. Well, and he, he had his best performance a week ago, throwing for 310 yards in the loss of Central Michigan. Justin Rankin on the catch and gets to the 34, fumbles the football. They'll say he was down, and that's a gain of six. He's actually the leading rusher and the leading receiver as we have a flag on the field as well. It's right at the 40-yard line. We'll get our first call of the night from Kurt Johnson, our referee here in Akron, Ohio. After the play, unsportsman conduct, offense, number 46, 15-yard penalty. It is now second down. So you have a six-yard gain on first down. You feel great. Terrific start offensively, right? And then next thing you know, self-inflicted wounds, whether it's been injuries, whether it's been penalties, whether it's been undisciplined play, this has played Kent State all year long. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Chalfonte, Butler, and that's pretty much the recaps story. their season. Absolutely. Yeah. To Rankin. Makes a nice move though and picks up good yardage. Rankin to the outside and he's going to be forced out of bounds, but not before he gets the first down. Alvin Davis pushes him out. It's a gain of 21, so they get it right back. Well, what a way to rebound, and it was a huge hole up front for this offense and this offensive line. You see big number 74, Nate Warnock, in his offensive guard spot, collapsing the defensive tackle and opening up that gap. And what a recovery for Kent State. Rankin again, getting some blocks on the outside and gets up close to another first down run. That's a gain of eight. And so you have to feel like when you look at the roster, Tom, of who are their main guys? Who is their biggest threat? It's this guy, number 11, Rankin. It is, and statistically it's been Mike Kerrigan who we talked about coming on air, but Rankin's been their, their reliable workhorse in the backfield and so far staying ahead of the chains outside of that penalty in a second and short situation here. Rank it again and gets up to midfield right at the first down marker should be enough and they give it to him. No, a week ago this Akron defense struggled in the first series of the game versus Ohio. Big chunks of yardage on the ground. Looks like they struggled to adapt to the zone read and the quarterback run. Let's see if Akron settles down here because so far Kent State's having their way up front. They're running the football successfully and get another fresh set of downs right here at first down. So far pretty good at Justin Rankin, and that's what this team does. Sophomore, and leading rusher, but just over 400 yards on the season as Bolas rolling to the right and runs out of real estate. You and I were looking at some of the numbers, and they're yeah. just not pretty if you're a Kent State well, fan. No, they're really not. An offensive coordinator, Don Treadwell, who's been a longtime successful coach, was a coordinator at Michigan State under Mark D'Antonio. He's been a head coach before here in the Mac at Miami of Ohio. They just haven't been able to create explosive plays, haven't been able to sustain drives and, and be efficient in the red area. You look at some of the statistics of their skill players, they look more like mid-season statistics than end of year. Rank it again. And held up initially. Alvin Davis there to stop him after a three-yard game. It's going to be second, make it third down and seven now for Kent State. And this is the type of, of spot you wanted to stay out of if you're Kent State. Third and long. Now you're going to be in an obvious passing situation. See if Akron on defense decides to, to maybe come at you. Or, or right now it looks like a three-man front. Maybe force you to earn it by just rushing three, dropping eight. Last in the conference in third down conversion percentage is Kent State here. They have a third and seven from the 47 of Akron. 
Bolas, pressure, look out. He's not going to go anywhere. Swarmed under Jamal Baggett and Brennan Williams for Akron defensively. It's a loss of nine. Boy, they really got after this uh, Kent State front, and it looks like it's going to be a three-man rush, but they overload the B-gap, and they just outnumber Kent State in pass protection. Really well-devised pressure there from the defensive front, defensive front seven uh, for Akron and Chuck Amato, their defensive coordinator. A.J. Coney awaits the kick from Derek Adams, and that's going to go into the end zone. Almost a chance for Kent State to pin them deep. Group wishing them well, and they're hoping that after tonight, they'll be playing for the MAC championship. Absolutely. Kato Nelson and throws that one away as he was under duress. Anthony McKay got the hit on him for Kent State. Like Hacker was trying to set up the screen to the backside there and just under duress. Smart play by Cato Nelson. Get rid of that football. See the little token fake are going to throw back. He's just rushed. No way he can get out of the way of the pressure there. There's a flag down, and I was wondering that because he was still in the pocket and there was no receiver in the area. If you're in the pocket, you have to throw the ball through an area where there's a receiver. Intentional grounding, yep. Yep. offense, number two, excuse me, number one. There was no receiver in the area. They had Lots of down at the spot of the foul, second down. It's only when you get out of the pocket that right. you can throw the ball and it has to get back to the line of scrimmage. He was still in the pocket. He was, and they had A.J. Coney. You can't see from this screen. They had him over to the left, but Cato Nelson throws the football downfield and out of bounds. If he throws it laterally and out of bounds he's he's in the clear that's a great call by the officials here tonight so it's going to back up Akron to their 13 yard line it's going to be second down and 17. play fake to Morgan pressure and Nelson now this time is out of the pocket and is able to get it back to the line of scrimmage Eric Simpson lays the stick so all of a sudden Kent State now has been starting to get some pressure on Nelson, and he's going to have to be weary of that as this game progresses. Yeah, they're going to have to shore up their protection a little bit. I think continue to try and move the pocket. Right now, uh, James Alexander, as you mentioned, a, a host of Kent, Place, Kent State Golden Flashes, playing pressure up front, not having to do it with blitzes or dogs, just doing it with a four-man rush. Got to be careful not to make a mistake here, deep in your own territory, third down and long. And they will keep it on the ground. Nelson on the draw, up close to the 20-yard line, and it's going to be punt time. It's just a gain of six. That's a big win for, for Kent State on defense right now. They settled down, and that opening series for Akron, they went up and down the field and were able to score with ease and settling down, getting some pass rush, forcing a third long, and now they're going to end up with some pretty good field position for their offense. KBS Price is back to return, but the kick is blocked. And a nice job by Kent State's Carlos Pickett that got his hand on it. And down at the 31-yard line, so it's going to be amazing field position for Kent State. Pickett with the block, his first of the season, and got there in the face of Nick Gasser, the punter for Akron. And a 12-yard punt is what that ends up being. We talked about having good field position had they gotten the punt away clean. Now they've got a tremendous opportunity with the ball at the 30-yard line. You see the extension over the toe of the punter there. That's just really good work on behalf of the kicking game at Kent State. And why not? Pull out all the stops. What do you have to lose? Right. You're in a rivalry game. You're on the road. You're trying to spoil the party for Akron trying to get to Detroit. Bolas hit as he throws over the middle, and the pass is dropped. Almost hauled in by Trey Harrell, and Kyron Brown was in there, and he got his hand in the mix for Akron to knock him loose. Yeah, number four, Kyron Brown, a big, tall, long corner, 6'1", 190, but it's number five, Ulysses Gilbert, who gets into the face of George Bolas right there. And the, uh, listen, they almost come down with this right there with Trey Harrell. Just good defense right there from Kyron Brown on the corner. 
Bolas had like one second right there, yeah. and he was right in his face. Rankin now in motion. Keeper by Bolas. And not much. It's going to be third down and long. Just a gain of two here for Kent State. Here comes the substitution package for Akron on defense. Chuck Amato expecting a, a, a pass here. This is a good series defensively for Akron. Quick turnaround, get your defense on the field. You've come ready to play. If they get nothing, it's a 46-yard field goal from this spot, and their kicker Shane Hines is hit from 48 this season. I think they're two down territory if they get half of it back. Bolas pressure, and he's sacked. And a ball comes out. Let's see if Akron has it. They signal fourth down. And it is Kent State football, but at the 35-yard line, and it's going to be fourth and 15. Loss of seven on the sack. George Bolas just trying to work through his progressions. This entire series has been dominated by Akron's front, front seven. You see Ulysses Grant there. The ball does come loose. Officials are going to call it down. You did it. Ulysses Gilbert. That's oh, it's a great <laughs> I know. I, know. We, we, I was talking <laughs> with the Akron people this week. They said everybody does Time it. <laughs> well, happy to the group. First of the half. As soon as you see this Ulysses, I know. Like, Who's the only Ulysses you know? <laughs> but yes, Gilbert was in there on the play, and he's been money this season for Akron defensively. 7 0 zips on top. It's going to be fourth down at 15. Well, Tom, you're on the go a ton. So am I. You've done a ton of games here recently. you got to use the ESPN app. It's the only way to find out what's going on when you're on the go. Watch all the games. ESPN, ABC College Football streaming live. Scores, news, and highlights. We do it all the time. The best that I love about it, I get on there, I get my scores, but then if I need to get caught up on something that's happening right now, we'll watch the game live. Right. We'll watch multiple games at the same time. You got your TV, the app going. It's great. It's going to be a field goal attempt here, a 52-yard attempt, and it's for Shane Hines. And the kick is no good. Had the distance. Sure did. But just off to the left. So I thought that might have taken them out of field goal range, but they said no, we're going to give it a go. And Hines just missed. Kent State must feel good about the last series they had on defense as they forced a long third and fourth down conversion for Akron. So let's see what Akron can come back with. Up 7 nothing over Kent State. Kent State's taking some of this momentum back. Can Akron drive the length of the field? We come back. And overthrown on the sideline was Quadarius Smith. And checked by Jarrell Foster. All right, coming up on Friday. It's Black Friday. Get your shopping done early and sit back and watch this one. Number two and undefeated Miami. They take out Pittsburgh and Newt Eastern on ABC, trying to keep their college football playoff hopes alive. Canes, Panthers also streaming live on the app. You've seen them, Tom. Yep. What do you like about the Hurricanes here? I like that they do all the things that you have to do to play complimentary football. They don't turn over the ball. They force turnovers. They're not heavily penalized, and they're an excellent tackling team on defense. Second down, Akron. Handoff to Morgan. Breaking free again. Manny Morgan. Getting through the fenders and inside the 25 of Kent State. Another great block in the offensive line. Kyle Ritz in right guard this time, helping to spring him for a gain of 42. Well, that Akron offensive line must have had a talking to after that last series. Getting after it there up front. You, you referenced it right there. Big offensive guard Kyle Ritz. And then Manny Morgan just off to the races with big chunks of yardage that I referred to in the first drive that he's capable of ripping off. You see him protect the football there at the end as you get into the red area. And this is where Cato Nelson in this offense a week ago was so efficient. Let's see if they can carry that over here tonight. Whistles blow here as the play clock was down to zero. We get a timeout. Play game, nope. offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Got to understand, when, when that ball gets spotted and the offense is trotting down, more time goes off that play clock than you think it does. And next thing you know, you're looking to the sideline, you're trying to get the ideal call, the ideal play, but you've actually lost probably an extra 10 to 12 yards on the trot down to the ball. Okay, you got to have that one ready. Yep. First down and 15 now from the 28. Morgan in the backfield.
Nelson over the middle for the end zone and overthrown for Smith. Quinn area Smith and a guy that is one of the tops in the country in his average per catch. And probably yeah. because of plays like that, he averages 20 yards of reception. Yeah, nobody in the middle of the field for Kent State. They brought some pressure there going man-to-man -man across the board. But area Smith, now that's a risk. He's the fastest player on this field, bar none, between both teams. So if you feel like you can hold up the man-to-man -man coverage, by all means. But be careful not to give up an explosive play. Second down run here by Nelson and Morgan blocking in front, but he's not going to get much. And it's going to be a third and long here for Akron. James Alexander makes the tackle. You know, that just shows you what that five-yard delay in game oh. does on this sequence. It absolutely kills you just after I was stating how good they've been in the red area, especially in their win last week versus Ohio. And this is a really good job by James Alexander. You see their number five in his middle linebacker position. Really nice job tackling, shedding blocks, getting to the football, as well as 22, Jim Jones, in on the action. Third down for Nelson. Trying to dump it off, and he threw it right into the hands, or into the uh, field, and Boyk Bay, the defensive end, and knocks it right down. And it's fourth and 15. Yeah, and he's trying to hit a wide receiver coming across. We'll see him coming across the middle of the field and just dump it off right there. Number five, Trevon Chapman. If he hits him, he's off to the races. That was a little too nonchalant that time. He's got to dump it over him. Yeah, just dump it over. That's exactly right. It's going to be a 45 yard field goal attempt, and it's going to be Nick Gasser. And the kick is good. Gasser from 45. It was just one for two on the season coming in. And a season long 45 yarder, and it's Akron up 10 nothing. One for two on the season. So you're punting a lot or you're scoring a lot of right. touchdowns. Akron getting after it. A nice drive. Getting the ball back down. 10 nothing over Kent State. Welcome back, Jack. Ohio, it is 10-0. The Zips on top, playing to earn a spot into the MAC championship game if they can win this one here tonight. Final week of the regular season. And on the kickoff return here for Kent State, not going to get past the 15-yard line. Trey Harrell will get to the 19, excuse me, and that's where they'll start. After we tell you about rivalry weekend and two teams looking to avoid upsets, we stay in the college football playoff top four. You get number four, Oklahoma. After the rankings out here tonight, they get on West Virginia and Norman. That's at 345 Eastern. Then at 730, we've got third-ranked Clemson squaring up against South Carolina. Do you see any upsets in the making with these two games? I, I don't think I do. No, I think the Clemson-South Carolina game is going to be much closer than it was a year ago. In fact, the broadcast of that game, in Clemson a year ago, be much tougher in Columbia. But keep in mind that West Virginia, Will Greer is out. Backup will step in for West Virginia. Kyler Murray, the quarterback at Oklahoma, will start that game in place of Baker Mayfield. But a reverse action now. Here as it goes to Kerrigan after Rankin hands it off to him. And he is going nowhere, just rips down into the stands. Jordan George, number seven for Akron. And luckily, no flags on the play, too, as you got 
Pushed it to the signage. That's a loss of seven. These corners for Akron are really big. Number seven, Jordan George. He's a six foot, 205 pound corner. That's a safety body type running down 87. Kerrigan there with help from his partner. You got Kyron Brown. You got Sean Fenstrand, Alvin Davis. All of these guys are big, good looking athletes in the back end for Akron. Polis and nowhere to go right now here on second down and long and taking down Ulysses Gilbert to gain a four third down and 13 on the way. It's really been the story for both offenses Mike tonight is their inability to get ahead of the chains on first and second down. Now Akron's handled it better offensively and, and gotten themselves out of a hole. We have yet to see if Kent State can pull off the same thing. See if we find number 87, Kerrigan, their top wide receiver. They need third down here, 13. Kerrigan is in the slot to the top of the screen. Off the line of scrimmage. Rank it in motion. Keeper by Bolas. That's not going to get it done. They play it safe. It's going to be fourth down, and Kent State will kick as we approach the two minute mark to play here in the first quarter. Just really surprised by that call. There are a multitude of athletes on this offense, Kerrigan, Rankin, that are better suited to maybe make more of an explosive play than your quarterback who's a passer first, runner second. So a little bit perplexed by that by that call. And now you got to get a punt off and Akron's going to have themselves fine field position to start this next series. And why not try to get Rankin going down the field a little bit too? I don't know how many times that's going to work. Now. Sure. You know, sweep that Akron's certainly been ready for, and the punt is taken in at the 33, 46-yard kick. And the Zips with a 10-0 advantage and a minute 45 to play in this first quarter. This is for the wagon wheel that goes to the winner of this annual rivalry between Kent State and Akron, just 11.6 miles apart. A lot of these players have played against each other sure. in high school. They know each other. They see each other around town, and it's... It's so close, this proximity with this rivalry. And that's what makes rivalries uh, so good. You know, I, I think that, you know, look at the series history. And when you have a rivalry, you want those games to be pretty evenly matched. You see 33, 24, and 2 in favor of Akron. That's the type of rival you want. You don't want it to be lopsided. You want it to mean something because there's equitable balance. Last year, Akron was able to come back and get the win 31 27. Late heroics in that game. Kato Nelson here, body slam to the turf, and a flag comes in. And that was John Cunningham that took him down. It's just a one-yard gain, but flag flies immediately, a couple of them, after Nelson was slammed to the turf. Number 90, big John Cunningham. He's not very tall, six foot, almost 300 pounds. That was a pretty violent takedown. The officials are conferring here with a minute and 38 to play first quarter. This could tack on a bunch for Akron. Here we go. Flagrant personal foul. Defense number 90. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Number 90 is disqualified from the game. Whoa. Wow. Which would then define flagrant for you, those of you at home. Wow. And I, I think you, you make that call as an official if you are convinced that there's another way that he could have been tackled. Do you think there is? I'd like to see it one more time if we could. Let's get this play first, though. It's first down and 10. It'll come back to it. John Cunningham has been ejected from the game after that tackle. First and 10 for Kent State. Or Akron at the run. 49 and. Nelson is sacked. Anthony McKay able to make that play. That's a loss of 10. And that's a tough sequence. But they respond to this play. Well, they really do. And McKay, 52 there, just penetrates that inside gap, the A gap between the center and the guard. And you've got to, you've got to have that gap protected more than any other gap in your offensive front. It's the closest and the shortest distance to the quarterback. Well, McKay picks up his teammate there after that play for the loss of 10. It's second down and 20 for Akron. Give to Morgan, and he's ripped back, and Jim <laughs> Jones, you know, similar. 
with that spin tackle throwing him back. Yeah, I was going to say, good thing he didn't fall straight back, or Jim Jones would be finding himself on the sideline with his partner there, John Cunningham. Number 22, the linebacker out of Tallahassee, Florida. Well, it, 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 Tom, it's bad enough for this defensive front for Kent State coming in. Jordan Robinson, a defensive end, injured, not playing tonight. Jonte Bird, a defensive tackle, not in action tonight. Now they lose Cunningham, a defensive right. tackle. I mean, I don't know how much more thin it can get for Kent State. And Demetrius, Monday, 21, playing. The shot deep has a man that was Chapman. Trayvon Chapman had just overthrown and incomplete. One time for Akron as we go back to the flagrant takedown by John Cunningham on quarterback Kato Nelson. Yeah, you see right here the flagrant personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct there. That official was convinced that the tackle could not have been made in any other in any other way. And so how they define that is the tackle went beyond a normal football tackle in their eyes. You get an unsportsmanlike conduct. And you get two unsportsmanlike conducts, you get tossed. But in this case, a flagrant unsportsmanlike conduct tosses him from the game Absolutely. immediately. Almost like in basketball, you think about a flagrant one and a flagrant two. Flagrant one, two shots of the ball. Flagrant two, two shots of the ball. The guy's ejected. That's exactly right. So this time again, the tackle went beyond the normal process of a football tackle or a football form. And so here's the first three drives of the night for Kent State. Punt, they missed the field goal and punted again. But with all that's been happening so far here tonight, I mean, 10-0, not all that bad. But look where they're starting here from the yeah. right seven-yard line. Yeah, it really should not have fair caught that ball inside the 10-yard line. Right. Should have let that one go and get this ball out and get a little bit more room to work. But even Akron on offense, their third downs to go have been averaging 16.5 yards. Ranking on the carry. And runs out of bounds, picks up a few here on first down for Kent State. And it's been a real tough season for them right from the beginning of the campaign. They lost a player, Tyler Hines, who passed away at the beginning of June, the second morning of workouts. And then their coach, Paul Haynes, who was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He overcomes that. He's doing well now, which is good to see. You know, but they have all that to begin the season. And that right there is enough in and of itself. And on the field, it's been tough. Bolas is taken down. It's going to be third down. And Bolas is in action because Nick Holly, their starting right. quarterback, got injured in the third game of the season. He's done for the year. And that also is added to another quarterback that was lost during fall camp as well. So depth depleted. You see George Bolas, you know, not a dynamic runner. I think he's a serviceable runner, but at least they've got them in third and manageable here. There is movement here as Bolas takes a shot, and that pass is intercepted by Jordan George, but there is a flag down and movement by Akron. Offside, defense, number nine, five-yard penalty. Yardage results. First down. Jamal Davis is over the line, and that negates the interception. Number nine, Jamal Davis, the defensive end. I mean, you just got to line up, put your hand down, look down the line, and see where you're at. See if we get a little jump right off the ball. No doubt about it. Got to hold your water in there. That's the first third down conversion of the night for Kent State. It comes via the penalty. Bolas being chased. And again, just has to throw that one away. Kent State, 2 and 9 in the season, 1 and 6 in the MAC. Akron, 6 and 5, 5 and 2, playing for a chance to go to the title game. And we know how important this game is for these two schools. No matter what kind of year each team is having, it's come down to the last possession in 11 out of the last 12 seasons. Bolas, again, nothing doing there. And you're right, Tommy. He's just not going to get away. He's not that dynamic no. of a runner. That play's not going to do much. Work. Yeah, I, I think in the run game, they're going to have to start getting Kerrigan and Rankin involved. Uh, 
they're not capable right now up front offensively uh, of getting any type of seamless blocks inside in their run game versus the like of Brock Boxen and Jamal Davis, Brian Reinke, that defensive front, really good for Akron. Third down, Bolas's pass, and on the slant off the hands of Chris White. No flags, and fourth down and ten. Darian Daly was there on coverage for Akron. Can't seem to take care of, uh, take advantage of any favorable play. You know, they, they throw the interception. All right, should have turned the ball over on downs. You get the penalty, get them a fresh set of downs, can't capitalize. Both teams are really kind of hurting themselves, yep. though, here tonight. You know, no Akron's up 10 nothing, but we had just seen a stat. Their average third down was third and 16 and a half yeah, yards 16 and a half so far yards. this game. And outside of the first series for Akron, they have not been able to sustain any consistency on offense. And this thing's just going back and forth. A.J. Coney, a fair catch. And we'll see your 38-yard line, first down and 10. Well, movement again, it looked like, and this pass is intercepted. Picked off by Demetrius Monday for Kent State. No flags are down. It looked like the Golden Flash has got an incredible jump at the line of scrimmage, Tom, but there are no flags, and that's a 20-yard interception return by a guy that we didn't know was going to even play tonight. Yeah, the defensive tackle jumps the snap and just bowls over the center, but regardless, Cato Nelson throws this football directly to Monday, 21 there. Just seemed like there was a miscommunication between the type of route. Intended target runs a little speed cut out route, and I think Cato Nelson thought he was going to settle up in the hole there versus zone coverage Monday. Johnny on the spot. And looky here, Kent State. Now they've been here before after a block punt in almost the exact same spot of the field and were not able to capitalize. This is a critical series for Kent State on offense. Bolas hands off to Rankin, who finds a hole, and Rankin gets close to the 15 yard line, a yard and a half shy, gave him nine. Shalfonte Butler, that tight end, got a nice block for him. I think you got your put your trust with Butler and the rest of this offensive line and run the football. Hand this ball off to Rankin. George Bolas is not your best runner. Right. This is your most dynamic playmaker in the backfield. Feed him, allow the offensive line to get some push, continue to run the football until Akron can prove to successfully stop it. Well, after that, Tom, now they change it up, and Keyshawn Gamble is in, and he gets the first down for Kent State, though. And the bruising back gets inside the 10. So that's their freshman at 6'1", 249 at a Cincinnati, Ohio. And it's going to set up a first down and goal. 6'1", 249 is a big boy. So they've got some backs there that can push the pile. If I'm Kent State, I'm lining up and I'm doing it quickly. And I'm running the exact same thing until Akron shows some stoutness at the point of attack, which they haven't to this point. Really good looking run there for Kent State offensively. Now Rankin is back in, first and goal for the Golden Flashes here, their best opportunity so far tonight. Rankin, head of the backfield, stretches it out, he's going to go in, touchdown! Justin Rankin, and Kent State is on the board. Rankin does a nice job avoiding there in the backfield with the attempted tackle and bounces the play to the perimeter. And then it's just speed and determination. And that drive is successful a drive as we've seen from Kent State tonight, but it was because they ran the football. And the extra point by Hines is good, and it's now 10-7. to Akron leads it by only three. It all started with the interception. Demetrius Monday is now in the top 10 in the nation. He's got five picks on the season. And it's able to set up the touchdown run by Justin Rankin, his third of the season. And we've got a three-point ball game here in Akron. At Mazda, driving matters. That is some solid video from our booth coordinator, Naveed Kajabi, making the drive. from Kent State here to Akron, 11.6 <laughs> miles. That's the distance separating these two games. Documenting his travels. Yes. 
said that it was very safe on that <laughs> drive. Yep. Kent State looking for their first road win this season, and that's Monday, number 21, who came up with the interception, his fifth of the campaign, and things have turned around now for Kent State. And how about for Cato Nelson at quarterback? We'll have to see what he does here for Akron. Tommy started two for three, 37 yards on that drive, with which they scored. He's 0 for his last six with that interception. Hey, he's been sacked twice. He's also been hit six times, so tough sledding so far for Cato Nelson. Van Edwards on the return, and he's taken down at the 17-yard line. Miles Daniel and Dalton Hicks. And a special teams group fired up for Kent State. They're in a three-point ball game here now as we take a look at what happened on these last few drives for the Akron Zips. I mean, the opening drive, the touchdown, but since then, punt. A field goal, but a punt and interception, it's not gone well. No, it has not gone well. They haven't been able to sustain any type of consistency uh, since that opening drive, they've, they've gone backwards. They've been in third and long an awful lot. Just had the ill-advised throw that resulted in a turnover, which then resulted in points. Akron's got to get back on track here. Morgan's in the backfield, first down and ten. It is Morgan trying to get the edge and will not get much. That's James Alexander in there, and if he got anything at all, knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. Matt Summers as well, another guy that's been banged up, defensive end that has seen some action, a senior for Kent State. Yeah, Matt Bell, 93, the defensive end. He's been hustling down the line of scrimmage, and that's just a good job. You see all those big fellas running for Kent State, playing hard. Despite what type of season they've had, the sideline was re-energized with that interception and touchdown. Nelson can't get away, and he is sacked by Elvis Hines at the five-yard line. First sack of the season for Hines, and the third by Kent State tonight. See Hines off the left side of your screen. He's going to come unblocked off of the edge. They just didn't have enough blockers to account for him. That one's on the quarterback. Inexperienced Cato Nelson, a redshirt freshman. And, Mike, this offense is going backwards and has been for the last three series. They ruled him down, his knee down at the eight-yard line, but it's not good. Morgan now trying to break free, and he'll get up close to the 20-yard line, but that's about where the original line of scrimmage was, and it has not been good, especially for Akron as of late. Boy, Kent State shutting them down to force another punt. Forcing a punt, and it looks like Kent State's going to have really good field position to start off this drive. Now Cato Nelson been sacked three times, hit eight times, and this offense, as a result, is out of rhythm. And it's a banged up and bruised Kent State defense as well that's given their all here tonight. Good to see as KBS Price awaits this kick. All the way back inside of his 30-yard line, Price, with some room here, gets up to the 40 and taking multiple hits. Knocked out the 41. Here comes a late flag. 51-yard kick by Nick Gasser, but 10-yard return, and we'll check the flag. I don't know, Tom, kind of expected a little bit more from Akron's offense and that Offensive line has played together a lot this season. You're going to try to win this game to go to the MAC championship. Right. It just looks a little uninspired here tonight. Well, it does, and you know when you're playing against the rival, even when the rival, as we get the official during the call. return, holding, receiving team number 37, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Yeah, when you're Akron, you have everything in front of you. You're playing the rivalry game versus a team that's been down. Sometimes it's hard to get kids to focus. You start to look at the record instead of looking at the team that's coming into town. It's got nothing to lose. You see the illegal block in the back there. It was on Cepeda Phillips. Right. 37. There's a lot of self-induced penalties and problems here tonight by both teams. You have outstanding field position that could be at the peak of the regular season. A win for the Akron Zips, and they're in the MAC championship game. They lead by only three right now. 
And it's Kent State football first and 10 at the 20-yard line. After the penalty, Bolas is going to be taken down in the backfield for another loss. Jamal Davis on the play. And, Tom, this ball should have been at the 40-yard line because right. you, you get the block in the back on the return. You start at the 20, and now you lose four yards. Yeah, you lose four yards. You're behind the chains. And, again, just curious as to co the commitment to George Bolas to run the football when your best player in the backfield is clearly ranking number 11. Get him in the football. He has been your most productive player on offense. Bolas now back there by himself as they spread it out. They get it to Rankin, but on the turf to make the catch and down at the 21-yard line. It's going to be third down and nine. Now you get some of it back, but if you throw a catchable ball, your target gets to turn, run, right. and gain some extra yards out of the catch instead of your third and nine. Substitutions here. Rankin is in still. Kerrigan in the slot to the bottom. One of their best receivers, 87. Price checks in, third down conversions 0 for 4. They did get one though helped out by a penalty, but that does not count in the official stats. Bolas, I don't know where that was going. It hits the turf low, incomplete, and it's three and out for Kent State. Bolas is one, make it two for six passing for 11 yards in this game. And they're only down by three points. That's what's amazing. Two for seven, excuse me. Just down by three points and, and yet another punt now for Akron to get the ball back. And one of these two teams has got to start getting things going, sustaining some consistency. You look at eight rushes, minus four yards, yet they continue to try and get him involved in the run game. Short punt. but Akron looking for a win tonight to go to the MAC championship game as they lead by three, 10 to seven. We're midway through the second quarter. That's what's at stake here tonight and coach Bowden said that not many people gave them a chance last week versus Ohio they were down 21 to 10 in the second quarter they come back and they win that ball game and that's how they have this ability to go to the title game if they win here tonight Nelson's pass and is caught at midfield nice reception by Austin Wolf and finally some positive yards by the Zips especially to start this possession. Yeah, after the last five possessions, which only accumulated 35 total yards, this is a nice way to start off the series. Cato Nelson in rhythm, good timing, the ball outside to number 82, Wolf. Press set it down, so that's the rhythm we'd become accustomed to seeing from this offense last week in the first series tonight. Nelson with time again sideline around a little bit too strong again for Wolf and Demetrius Monday was there on coverage you know you got that one-on-one -on -one coverage there Mike to the outside you've got no underneath interference and you just missed that one it's the exact same throw that Cato Nelson had on the play before exact same intended target you just miss high and you can't miss those that's an open easy throw to the sideline Morgan to the left of Nelson, second down and 10. It is Morgan on the carry and another tackle for loss by Kent State. Anthony McKay first on the scene, Theo Igboig Bay also, and Kent State now puts Akron in a third and long. Well, 58 at Boyd Bay and McKay just absolutely, virtually unblocked at the point of attack by Akron up front, and that's that's been a trend, an unpopular one here for Akron on offense after their first series of the game. They have struggled to block the interior of the Golden Flashes. That's why they find themselves in third and long right now. This is the sixth third down attempt coming for Akron, all at least of 14 yards or more. Nelson trying to stretch it out and unable to make the grab is Kevin Gladney. And right there with him step for step was Jarrell Foster. It's fourth down and 14 for Akron. It's actually a pretty well-thrown ball, and that's why they call it a game of inches. Just out of the reach. The intended target there down the sideline. Kevin Gladney. You gotta make you gotta give your quarterback a little bit more room from the sideline. 
but you don't dislike that throw because it wasn't in danger of getting intercepted. Gasser on the kick. Cavius Price lets it go, and it landed out of bounds. It's going to help Akron out here. It's out of bounds at the five-yard line, and that's a 49-yard kick, and it sets up the golden flashes at the five. Gasser loves it. Well, he should. 95 yards is a long way to go for Kent State, the way they've been playing offense here tonight. This is a great opportunity to regain field position if you're Akron on defense by getting a stand. PK-80 Invitational gets underway Thursday on ESPN. We've got number nine, North Carolina, taking on Portland at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. Then number one, Duke. Takes on Portland State. Both games streaming live on the app. Some of the best teams in the country matched up in this two-tournament field. Uh, honor Nike co-founder Phil Knight's 80th birthday. And Justin Rankin in a short game. Taken down by Ulysses Gilbert, the third from Kent State. Three-yard pickup, second down. Kent State right now has 66 total yards of offense. Rankin has 65 of them. <laughs> Now he's behind Bolas here on this second down play, and you're right. Bolas rushing is minus yards. He's thrown for only 11 yards here tonight. This catch is made. Nice job here, Cavius Price. Price making some moves. It gets all the way up to the 30-yard line. First down for Kent State. That's a gain of 21. That's just a little package play with the run game. You're going to read the side linebacker. If he stays in to try to defend the run, you just hit the little stick route. You see 42 in a conflict of assignment there for Akron on defense. Very well executed by quarterback George Bolas and a big gain to get this offense out of a hole. Ton of breathing room now from the 29-yard line. First down and 10. Bolas, pressure coming. Lost it up, and it's incomplete. Kerrigan, the intended target. Jordan George on coverage for Akron. Give them credit for trying to go to their top wide receiver there. Kerrigan has had a really nice season. Absolutely, and that was well covered. I believe that time by Alvin Davis, number one. Okay. He tried to get around, get his hand on the football. It's his corner route. Actually, it's just a fade route out of the slot. That was a difficult pass to complete. Good coverage from Davis underneath. You're right. Pardon me, Davis not... George Davis, the sophomore free safety, second leading tackler, and now the ground game and another loss. Brennan Williams on play, loss of three, and Rankin taken down. Each team doesn't seem to get any momentum on their drives, Tom. There's always a negative play that's been mixed in there. And it's happening on first or second down, so you find yourself in third and a mile at the, at the end of what seems to be each and every series. You're not putting yourself in any favorable field position setup. You said the numbers on Rankin, 55 yards. The rest of the team now with minus two. Bolas, hit as he throws, sideline, and it's knocked down, incomplete. And it was the play by Kyron Brown. As Trey Harrell almost had the catch, and there's a flag down on the field. And he not made that play. Offside defense. Number 97, five-yard penalty, third down. Still will give them a, another sh chance at it here after the five-yard penalty, 4.07 to go second quarter. And Brennan Williams, the defensive tackle, the junior. Kyron Brown makes a great play on the ball in the air. Now you give this uh, offense another five yards and another shot to convert third down. Four receivers and a tight end for the Golden Flashes. Bolas' pass is caught. And a first down, Chris White on the catch of the 43-yard line. Darian Daly makes the tackle. That's a nice play there, a gain of 12. Darian Daly on the coverage on the slant route to White, number three. Just a very nice, easy underneath throw and good confidence for George Bolas to get the ball out of his hand, move the chains, get to midfield, and finally have something good happen, gain some confidence. Drive continues now, and it's Rankin and going the wrong direction yet again. Finally taken down, Ulysses Gilbert. Ulysses Gilbert, 
103 tackles. That's his 104th now on the season, doing a nice job. Just pressure in the backfield. And as you stated before, Mike, every time you take two steps forward, you take one step back. That's right. And these negative plays for Kent State are just killing this offense. Gilbert's teammate Kyron Brown helped him out to get in the backfield first. And the same deal yet again here. That is the seventh tackle for loss now for Akron's defense tonight. Gilbert and Brennan Williams combined for that one. Well, this is one of those situations you start to look. You're under three minutes. You want to get the ball back for your offense. If you're Akron, you've got three timeouts. There's going to be plenty of time on the clock. So don't give up a big play here if you're Akron. Give your offense a chance. They've been struggling which could put him in an advantageous position given they got three timeouts left. First down marker is all the way at the Akron 46-yard line. Third and 20 for Kent State. Bolas, pressure, flushed out, and throws it incomplete for Kerrigan. And Ulysses Gilbert yet again. Boy, what's got into him? Junior weak side linebacker for Akron is the one that was chasing Bolas again that time. They, number one, haven't been able to block him. And number two, he's just got a tremendous motor. If you watch him, he just does not stop. Gilbert himself has five tackles, one and a half for losses as the punt here on the way to A.J. Coney, who calls it a fair catch at the 28. Now Akron with three timeouts remaining. 2.12 on the clock here in this first half. They need to get something on this drive, Tom. Kent State's going to get the ball to start the second right. half. Their offense does not look good, and they got to watch it. You keep a team like this around, you're playing for a chance to go to the championship game here tonight. There, there's no doubt about it. You, for a chance to finish 7-5, and five, you see Chuck Omato, the defensive coordinator. He's got to be very happy with the way his defense has played tonight. They've gotten the ball back to this offense, but the offense has got to capitalize. And to your point, a MAC championship berth on the line, and also the opportunity to get the wagon wheel, maintain it. This is an important drive for this offense going into the locker room. Nelson takes a snap. Pressure, they dump it off, and it's incomplete. Manny Morgan, and you know, when you just see it like that, you go, oh, they're setting up the screen. Here comes a big gator. Morgan can't catch the pass. And you can see Manny Morgan's eyes and you see his head turn prior to actually catching and securing the ball. You can see his head turn to look downfield, and he doesn't focus on the football. You've got to complete the action of the catch before you can make something happen. And that thing had some green grass in front of it, Mike. Yeah, this has just not been happening tonight, especially after that first drive for Akron. Second down and 10, Nelson. 75 yards down the field, the opening drive, and since then, not much. Nelson on the carry gets to the 35. It'll be third and short, so that's going to be the first time tonight yeah. that Akron's in something less than third and 14. I call timeout here. This will be 30-second 60th meeting between these two teams tonight. Third time since 2014, they closed the season out versus one another. Came down to the last minute last year. Rackard won 31 to 27. This wagon wheel, the prize that goes to the winner since 1946, Tom, and it's now brought in to include all 14 varsity sports and victories in each yep. sport, adding to the challenge standings and that's happened over the last five years now you see in the fourth quarter the team that's winning there in the last couple of minutes they'll take that wagon wheel and roll it to the end zone for that team and to the winner after the game all right big third down and three here for akron two minutes to go first half two timeouts remaining from the 35. Nelson and off the hands of Kobe Booker, who has the touchdown catch earlier tonight. And it's fourth down and three, and they're going to put this back to the Golden Flashes. Well, Kato Nelson wishes he had this one back. He's throwing to the right target. He's just inaccurate with the football. you got to stick that ball 
on your intended target there, Kobe Booker, who does have good hands, but don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. Who wants to win this game tonight, <laughs> right? Well, right now, uh, three <laughs> points tells you that Akron does. <laughs> this late in the season, got to expect a little bit more on time and on target plays for both teams at this point. And this will be down to the 21 yard line. I think it got touched before that. It might get moved up a few yards, but 144 to go if you're Kent State here. For that 19 second quarter yards for Akron, 58 for Kent State. Well, you look at that last drive as we were kind of outlining what Akron had in front of them. They had three timeouts. You had two and a half minutes. Three plays later, you pumped the ball. You still have two timeouts, and there's still a minute 44 left on the clock. And now you've just given Kent State, as you referenced, the team that's going to come out of the locker room in the third quarter and get the opening uh, kick another set of downs here. They did nothing well there. Now this pass is intercepted. Speaking of not doing well, Alvin Davis interception for Akron for the pass of George Bolas. George Bolas tried to force this ball inside on the seam route there between the linebacker and safety level and Alvin Davis, he's keying the quarterback. Sees it all the way, makes a nice play on the football, and Akron's in business, but can they do anything with it? Honestly, it's the first interception of the season for Alvin Davis, and I think he wanted Austin Wolf, but he didn't even turn around and look for the football. He, he really didn't, and that was a dangerous throw over the middle of the field into a tight window for George Bullis at Kent State. Ill-advised, especially when you're backed up, limited time left on the clock, and now two timeouts for Akron as they try to punch this thing in. Yeah, but you said it, Tom. Can they even do anything with it? That's the question right. here. They're at the 40-yard line. They make a play like that. Let's see about sudden change here. Let's see if they actually try take to make a, a take a shot yep. to the end zone. That's what most teams do when you get a turnover like this. Well, if you're going to do it, try and find number three, Quad Smith, the fastest player on the field. It's at the bottom of the screen. Nelson. Trying to do just that, going over the middle, and it's Smith, and it's incomplete. Well, they did try a shot, and Jarrell Foster was on coverage, exactly what you said. No, it's, <laughs> it's interesting, Mike, because uh, being in this booth and watching this game a week ago between Akron and Ohio, the deep ball was one of Cato Nelson's best assets. Tonight, he's just been off ever so slightly. It's either been a couple of inches, maybe a foot. That one, if he drags him across the field a little bit, it's a touchdown. Right, he could have kind of got away from Foster that time. Because yeah. like Foster was the one that had the better chance at catching that ball. Nelson is one for his last 12 tonight. Pressure, and this time it's caught by Manny Morgan, and there is a flag down as Morgan gets to the 35-yard line. There's a better touch on that throw. There's a flag back at the 45 on Akron's side of the field. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 30. Low hit. 15-yard penalty includes automatic first down. Wow, well, how big is that? Daryl Marshall, the quarterback who got called for that one for Kent State. It's reflective of Kent State's season. Uh, that's a discipline issue. Daryl Marshall, number 30. You're going to see him come off the right side of your screen right here. Watch how he goes low. And you just can't do that on a defenseless player, a quarterback in the pocket. It's a good call by the official. You want to minimize in injury. You want to maximize safety. That's why that rule is implemented. And that ball now gets placed down the 21-yard line. They've got Van Edwards and Manny Morgan in the backfield for Akron. And the officials, well, the whistle timeout here by Kent State. A minute and 12 seconds. This will be a three-second timeout. 
It's interesting, Mike, you know, that first drive that was so successful in the first quarter for Akron, there was a great blend of run to pass. And the runs were on early downs with a lot of misdirection. They have completely abandoned the run game. A.J. Milway, the offensive coordinator for Akron, just doesn't like something up front. They haven't, they haven't protected very well, but they have abandoned the run game. They have, and I think the real point in this game when it really turned to give Kent State that confidence was when they got that interception. Oh, they no doubt. The, go down the field and get the touchdown. I mean, it's 10 nothing. It's Akron ball. And then just a really bad, ill-advised throw by Nelson. And all of a sudden, you've ignited this Kent State defense. Guys that are banged up. That's their final game, but they are really playing better and in inspired defense after that. Yeah, and they've got nothing to lose, so they can take some risks. Let it all hang out. Nelson steps up and gets hit, stale on his feet, and able to get away. And Cato Nelson takes another big shot. Marcus Moore at the end. And a pinball there in that last sequence. And a timeout again. All right. Two things from a young quarterback's perspective. Number one, tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, ability to evade, keep a play alive. He gets hit and dinged around like a pinball but now you got to get out of bounds you've got to utilize the clock understand the situation so you don't have to burn a time out there is this just good coverage down the field by kent state tonight on accurate receivers or, or i think so not seeing I, the better play calls that you're looking for out of accurate like, well, what's happening when, when i saw right there there was plenty of time to throw the football i think kato nelson held it when you see a guy pat the ball or hitch up twice in the pocket then that clock's got to start going off in their head. Number two in undefeated Miami on Friday. They'll take on Pittsburgh at noon. We'll have it for you on ABC. Black Friday shopping after Thanksgiving. We'll see if the Hurricanes can keep this undefeated season going. Jiffy Loop rivalry series comes your way Friday at noon, 9 a.m. Pacific on ABC. 19 forced turnovers over, what, the last six, of the, six yep. games? Unbelievable. Second down for Akron. After the timeout, Nelson dumps it off. Chapman on the catch. And Chapman upended inside the 10. And Trayvon Chapman, a gain of 13. That's going to set up first and goal for the Zips. All right, have a sense of urgency. You don't need to be in a hurry here. Clock's your friend. They're going to run the clock now once the ball is spotted. Nice little dump off on the underneath tunnel screen. Chapman does the rest by breaking the initial tackle. Now let's be careful with the football in here. Make good decisions if you're Cato Nelson. Chapman, bottom of the screen. Coney at the top. First and goal, Akron. A little more movement up front, and it goes to Morgan, and he's shut down. No gain, Manny Morgan. And Theo Majet is the first on the play for Kent State. Timeout here once again with 26 seconds to go. Final timeout by Akron. Be faced with a second down and goal from the 10 yard line. I think you got to move the pocket here, maybe change the launch point. Use Cato Nelson, the quarterback at Akron's athleticism. So if he gets out on the perimeter and he doesn't like what he sees in the pass game, maybe he can use his legs to make something happen in the run game. We'll have a second back on the clock to 27. It'll be second down and goal for the Zips. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicks. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. you got to be careful, too. You're out of timeouts here. Absolutely. 27 seconds left. We've got a couple of shots. 10 yard line second down for nelson they have not scored a touchdown since their opening drive of the game offense really hasn't moved the football they got helped out here this time by the interception nelson fades the ball up top and it's incomplete and a flag comes in back corner of the end zone austin wolf was guarded by jamal parker and they're going to add a penalty on a sideline infraction on Paul Haynes, the head coach at Kent State, for throwing his play sheet. There's a lot happening on this last play. Wolf, Parker was defending him. 
Coach Haynes came onto the field. That's a point of emphasis this season. That's going to draw the flag, as you said, Tom. Let's look at it again. Cato Nelson kind of wish was throwing this football to the back shoulder, give Wolf a better opportunity to catch the football. But when that flag came out late is when Paul Haynes went ballistic on the sideline and threw every play sheet he had. Pass interference. Defense. Number seven. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First of after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense head coach, half distance to the goal line, first down. That is the head coach's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Hey, you can't come out onto the field and then, you know, throw in your sheet at the referee. That's not going to help matters. And now all of a sudden, Akron, after that penalty and the unsportsmanlike, they've got first and goal. With 21 seconds to go here on the doorstep. He probably would have gotten away with it, but his play sheet rolled on the grass for about 20 <laughs> yards to the head linesman into the end zone. Now Morgan is lining up to take the direct snap here for Akron, and Kent State is going to use their final timeout of this first half. Timeout, Kent State. Third final. Watch this, Mike. Watch, watch to the top right of your screen. Coach Paul Haynes at Kent State is going to come onto the field. He throws his play sheet, and it's a strike. That may be one of the longest plays of the game. Here. That <laughs> went for a touchdown. They got it to the end zone. Now, here's the thing. I can understand why he might be upset. People need to recognize this and realize it's not the NFL. There's, right. there's not a face guarding penalty. You right. can do that as long as you don't make contact, contact with the receiver. So I think he thought more of the contact was out of it coming from the offensive guy Absolutely. reaching over his head to try to make that catch. And that was the defense that the Kent State corner was stating. He felt like he was interfered with. Parker, who is covering Wolf, and well, there is contact there, though we saw it. And now, direct snap to Morgan. Morgan's going to walk in for the touchdown. Eighteen seconds left, first half, and Morgan for the score for the Zips. And just what a killer penalty that led to this play the direct snap to manny morgan does a nice job bouncing the play to the perimeter using his speed and quickness to outrun kent state's defense but to have the pass interference penalty then to have the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that's the difference between seven and three points going on the board for akron going into the locker room remember this drive started at the 39 yard line after the interception six plays just a minute 21 off the clock and Akron now leads it 17 to 7. nice run by Morgan nobody there to give him any sort of resistance and Akron scores on their opening drive of the game for a touchdown they sneak in a field goal and now they score a touchdown uh, probably their last drive of the first half here with 18 seconds to go. Yeah, and, and you know, Kent State, they're going to have to regroup. They do get the ball coming out. Uh, but this is now, with the way they've been playing offense, 10 points might as well be 30 points. Right. See that right there? Akron 6 and 0 oh, when leading at halftime. Just so happens they're 0 oh and 5 when they are down at halftime. This is for the right to go to the MAC championship game if Akron gets the win here tonight against their rival. Final game of the regular season. It's all thanks to that big comeback win for Akron over Ohio last week. Ohio needs an Akron loss tonight, and they need to win on Friday at Buffalo if they want to be in the title game coming out of the East Division. And Kent State down by 10. You got to figure they're not going to try anything crazy here. Bolus on the night, 4 of 12 passing for 44 yards. Has the interception. Leading player who has positive yards is Justin Rankin with 45 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Keyshawn Gamble running back has one carry for nine yards. Other than that, everybody has negative yards yeah. rushing tonight. 
And that's really been the story of this offense all season long, unfortunately. And it is Gamble. And one more play, maybe, and let's see. Kent State racing up to the line. They won't get it off. And Gamble's going to be taken down. That's going to be the end of the first half. Oh, no, the ball is loose. Oh, he's not down. It's taken in for a touchdown by Kent State, Ulysses Gilbert. They did not blow it dead, and Gilbert gets the ball and goes in for a touchdown. Are you kidding? Don't anybody move. Get out of here. Wow. I thought the play is blown dead. Here. And there's the ball out. It's tough to tell. I think it's pretty clear that the ball is out. The question is, did a whistle blow with right. forward momentum being stopped? Or was the play blown dead? Check this out. So, Gamble. And, and why, if you're Kent State, are you even doing that? They race up to the line to, to run, run the ball. play? Like he's going to go 70 yards for the touchdown? I mean. Let the clock run out. Get right? in the locker room and regroup as a football team. At what point do you think that you need to run two plays there? They should have just taken a knee and gone to the locker room. That is the absolute worst thing that could happen. I've never really seen that to race up and what a play so that you can fumble and it goes back for a touchdown. Well, and it does look pretty clear on the replay that that is a strip and a fumble by Ulysses Gilbert. I'm with you. I thought I had potentially heard the whistle as well. I said the play was dead, but I think you're right. And it is, if the whistle did not blow, that ball is out. Yep. And that's Gilbert going back for six points for Akron with no time on the clock. Clearly, do not hear a whistle there, Mike. And, no, when, you're right. and when you when you see it in game motion, not in slow motion, his forward momentum maybe isn't stopped the way it looks in slow motion. The call of the field was a touchdown. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. The half is over. Yep, the call of the field's a touchdown. Not enough there to either confirm or overturn the call so it stands and it's six points run back by Ulysses Gilbert who has had one incredible night for Akron on defense he's been in the backfield all night six tackles one and a half for losses a fumble recovery for a touchdown and Akron is able to score two touchdowns. They've only had two winning seasons, Tom, in the last 30 years. If you just yep. you wonder what can this group do to try to change things around. Overall, the culture and the entire university needs to come together to do something with this football program. No gain on first down. They run by Rankin. You know, and I asked Coach about it, and, you know, he was very candid about it, too. And, you know, it's not all on him, obviously. And he said there's been some great coaches, great administrators, great players that have come through right. this program. But it, it all hasn't been done together, and, and that's why it's been a struggle. Well, and it starts from the top down from an administrative standpoint, from a university standpoint, investing in the sport of football for the overall good of the university, and whether that's facilities, uh, whether that's donations, whether that's stadium enhancements. Uh, the resources have not been what they need to be at Kent State for them to compete year in and year out. Rankin on the carry and held up after a gain of a couple. And then the add-on onto the football field, 
injuries, yeah. and you're really in harm's way because you don't have the depth that other programs have. Well, yeah, you don't have the depth. Uh, you mentioned Coach Paul Haynes uh, missed the first three weeks of the season recovering from cancer treatments. Uh, you lose your quarterback in the first three weeks uh, of the season, and Nick Hawley, who started the season as your starter, and, and George Bullis uh, just hasn't been overly consistent. They haven't been able to create a lot of plays given their lack of depth and some of the injuries to their skill spots as well as the quarterback position. Third down, Bolas trying to get away from Sampson. His pass, and that's intercepted again. Picked off by Denzel Butler. First interception of the season for Butler. The sophomore quarterback, and they are fired up on the Akron sideline. Well, an ill-advised throw and a big no-no this time by the quarterback, George Bullis. I like the attempt to move the pocket, roll him out. Doesn't have the sideline throw, so he throws back across his body to the middle of the field late. And Denzel Butler steps in front of it, makes a terrific play on the football, and exactly what Akron needed defensively and exactly what Kent State needed to avoid in their first offensive performance. Two interceptions now, the fumble recovery for the touchdown at the end of the first half. Akron's defense is the one that's really getting it done here as they go on the ground, and Manny Morgan, who had that direct snap for the touchdown run at the end of the first half, gets taken down by Jim Jones. Second down, Akron's also dealt with some injuries themselves in the running back spot. Deltron Sands and Warren Ball, who was their star transfer yep. out of Ohio State, he got injured earlier this year. They've, they've solidified that spot, though. They've been pretty productive once they've settled in with some new faces. Morgan hit the backfield. There's been a lot of negative plays tonight for both teams. That's a loss of three, and James Alexander was the first on the scene. Marcus Moore cleaned it up. That time for Kent State defensively. I think Cato Nelson made the wrong call there. I believe that was a, a zone read principle there with the guard pulling around. And he should have pulled that ball as the defensive end widened out and taken the ball right up to the inside. Tight end Newman Williams was shaken up, comes off the field for Akron. Now they go with four wide here on this third down and 12 set. Eighth tackle for a loss tonight. Nelson. Gets out of trouble, staying on his feet, then he slips and goes down. All the way back at the 46-yard line. Jamal Peer was there, 14-yard loss, and it's obviously punt time. Very fortunate to secure that football. He's got to be very careful as he's trying to buy some time and extend the play. This pocket just absolutely gets collapsed with Kyle Ritz on skates, the offensive guard, back into the face of Cato Nelson, and here we are. Fourth down and these these lines to gain for both of these offenses tonight Mike have been unattainable well, Certainly, I mean you almost negate what has really been a decent Kent State defensive performance You know with the mistakes on offense this punt's gonna bounce inside the 10-yard line <laughs> That's twice that young man has yes. done that punt in the football field flipping field position important position there for all right, so Kent he was State, there last week, too. Yes. Kent State's last three drives, interception, fumble return for a touchdown, and an interception. Perfect time now to bring in your true freshman quarterback starting at the seven-yard line. It's Dustin Crum, and he'll carry for a couple yards to the ten-yard line. So they take out George Bolas. He's thrown a couple of interceptions here tonight. And you've got Dustin Crum, who... Will be in his 10th game of the season, but on the special teams a little bit too, but he's also thrown a few balls, has a touchdown with two picks. Seems to be more of a runner too, though, for this team. Oh, as good well. looking kid. Six foot three, two hundred and five pounds. And I think right now offensively you need a spark and there's nowhere really to go but up. Now the keeper again, and he's gonna get tackled down at the twenty yard line. It's gonna be good for the first down. So Crumb runs for the first. Picks up nine yards as George Bolas on the sideline and you see the numbers of you know what he's done here tonight And it's just not been good and they had to make a change 413 passing 40 Four yards and two picks and He's been taken down for losses in the backfield when he has carried the ball I just got to settle down and watch from the sideline here see if the youngster Dustin Crum 
keep these chains moving. Crum hands off to Rankin. And nothing happening. Alvin Davis. He's the one that had that interception earlier. Makes the tackle. We haven't heard much from Mike Kerrigan uh, tonight, who we talked about coming on air. He was really kind of the primary playmaker, jack of all trades type guy for this Kent State offense, as well as in their kicking game. Scored two touchdowns last week, but they have not been able to get the ball in his direction here tonight. 87's at the top of the screen. Crum eludes pressure and is going to head to the sideline and pushed out close to the first down marker. Be just a little bit shy. And you know, you mentioned Kerrigan, Tom, and it's just, you know, we're just being honest about the numbers. I mean, yes, he is one of their top players, but basically he's averaged maybe a catch, 1.2 catches a game and right. a, one rush a game. I mean, that, that's one of your best players numbers wise, and that's it's kind of sad, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. Coming into the game, he's got 13 receptions. Their leading receiver, Trey Harrell, has 18 receptions. Those are those are mid-season type statistics. So uh, the, the yards have been difficult to come by, as have first downs and as have points for the Golden Flashes. He has no catches tonight. Here's Rankin on the carry on third down, and the ball, well, they're going to say he was down. The ball came out again. This time, the line judge there blows him down. And shy of the first down, will be fourth down for Kent State. This one might be a bit interesting. You try and attempt to run the football here. It's clear when Crum hits the ground, that the ball is not in his hands. The question is, was his knee down when the ball came out? Well, the official had the exact same result. Yeah. There's an injured player down for Kent State at the 20-yard line. It's Theo E. Boykba. It's a defensive end. Once again, Quad Smith running down the side. He's running out of bounds for five, seven yards there. Uh, either they got to cut down their splits or you got to do a better job of getting off of press coverage and getting back over the top and create some space between you and the sideline. No, you're right. It was the same thing. He was out of bounds in the previous yep. one. The official threw the hat. He was out of bounds. So no chance, really. And he Boyk Bay gets up. That's good to see for Kent State. They don't need any more injuries, obviously. Fourth down and 10, and Akron will kick. We are midway through the third quarter. Really surprised at the mode of operation. Offensive coordinator A.J. Milway for Akron just attempting to throw the football, low percentage throws down the sideline that they haven't had a lot of success with tonight. Right. You can run the football, maybe throw the underneath stuff, move the chains and keep the clock running. Cavius Price to return the kick from Nick Gasser, who's had a real nice night punting the football. You and I were talking about that in the last break. Yep. He's pinned them twice inside the 10. Now, this is going to be inside the 20 at least. Down to the 14 yard line. So Gasser, a nice job to really change field position tonight. That's a 58 yard kick. One off his season high. 742 remaining in the third. Still Akron on top, 24 7. Akron offensively. You did this team last yeah. week, Tom. What's going on today? Oh, well, you see some of the coverage here. You got guys up in the face of the targets, but on the outside, you've got a nice cushion there. And we've seen Cato Nelson throw this comeback route successfully tonight. Instead, he goes to the top with little room into the boundary with a receiver running out of bounds. So I think a little bit of predetermining his decision uh, on offense could be a little bit more diverse and working through progressions. Rankin trying to get the first down, and he has it to the 25-yard line before he's pushed back by Ulysses Gilbert. He's probably thinking another strip from a recovery for a touchdown. Didn't get it this time, but... And, you know... When Akron decides to throw the football up 24-7, especially with low percentage throws, when you get the ball on offense, Kent State, you've got to take advantage of it. If Akron's going to give you these opportunities, he's going to stop the clock for you right. and give you the ball back. Rankin's been the top offensive player for Kent State tonight, and with that, he has 61 yards rushing. Crum. Good open field here, and to the sideline, he has a first down run. Tackled into the Akron sideline, 15 yard gain. It's finally up. There was an injured player done for Akron. That's Kyron Brown. Yep. Uh, they don't need him to go down. That's one of their better players in the defensive secondary. The junior, 6'1, 190. They've got really tall athletic players in the defensive secondary at Akron. It's a good group. 
It's a veteran group. Well, with tonight a win by the Akrips, they go to the championship game for the first time since 2005. Terry Bowden took over this program. He's now in his sixth season. And I asked him about the transition and what it was like. And he said, well, when I first got here, they said, well, just be respectful and play decent football. Then it was grown into, can we win a bowl? And then can we win the conference? And I asked him about turning the corner. He said, no, we are at the corner right now. So that's sure. how important this is here tonight and what they have on the line. Uh, there's no question. Terry Bowden has won a lot of football games at a lot of different places at different stages of his career. And to come out of the broadcast booth to get back into the coaching ranks when you feel that strongly about it, that passionate about it, to go back to the division level in North Alabama, have tremendous success, which earned him the opportunity to get the job here. Now you see that 30 and 42 record. Keep in mind when he took this job over, where this program is at, he's had an eight win season. If they win tonight, they're gonna have a seven and five season and a berth in the MAC championship game for the first time since 2005. So this program is trending up. And listen, Mike, you've got great facilities here. You can make an argument you got the best stadium facility. You've got indoor facilities for your football program uh, to use. And you're in a tradition rich state with great high school football and plenty of players to choose. Yeah, for sure. Here's Kyron Brown coming off the field, limping, and let's see if we can hopefully get an update on his status because you're right, they don't want to lose him. And they're trying to get ready to play for a championship if they can hold on and win this game here tonight. So that your corner is out. First down and 10 for Kent State. Fresh set of downs as Crum just ran for 15 yards, and here he is taken down for a loss of one by Brian Ranke. It's really been the story of the night, hasn't it? You get the big run, maybe you get a 10-yarder, a 15-yarder. Next play, you lose two, or you lose five, you lose seven. Brian Ranke off the edge. Number 94 is a defensive end, doing a nice job, and just takes the inside move, secures the tackle on the six-foot-three. Dustin Crum is a big runner, big strong runner. Uh, runner has done a nice job when he's come in tonight, but haven't had to throw the football yet. Crum goes to the sideline, ranking on the catch, and gets by Ulysses Gilbert and is able to pick up the first down, pushed out by Jamal Baggett. And this is really one of their best drives of the night that we're witnessing right now for Kent State. And I like the option and the choice there by offensive coordinator Don Treadwell to just make a nice, simple out route, uh, really nothing for the quarterback to have to read, just throw an, act uh, an accurate football, gain some confidence, you move the chains. Now all of a sudden you start to get some rhythm going with, with your offense. Into Akron territory, the 46-yard line, first and 10 here for the Golden Flashes. Crumb pressure gets away for the moment, and then is flung forward by Gilbert. Gives him an extra yard or two, and it'll be second down and nine. Looks like that was going to be a tackle for loss. Yeah. End up getting slung for a gain of one. His teammate Jordan George hit him in the helmet, so what are you yeah. doing, man? He's like, tackle him in the backfield, don't push him forward. Got some exposed gaps there underneath, but yeah, that could have been a loss of one or two. Ends up being a gain of about one and a half. The young man's had a good night tonight. Ulysses Gilbert came into this game, the leading tackler. He's been everywhere. Five wide as they spread him out. Crumb escapes and throws it over the top. It's deflected but caught by Cavius Price. For Kent State, and that's a little bit of luck that they finally get here tonight. Tip ball by the defender, but it ends up being a first down catch. Yeah, something finally goes their way. Darian Daly gets a paw on this. And this is just a nice job by Crum here. Navigating the pocket, getting outside, and getting his eyes back up and downfield for a second passing chance. And Daly, 24 there. Almost bats the ball away, but finally some good luck for Kent State. And that right there as we have a flag down and indications on the offense here. Ball start, offense, number 64, five-yard penalty, first down. A 21-yard gain, Tom, ties their longest of the night. And, you know, like you just said, <laughs> you move forward and then you go back. And that's kind of the way it's been here tonight. It's almost as, it's almost as if it's a prerequisite to play first yeah. down with first and 15. I would love to see 
for both teams tonight if there's been a series for them on offense where there hasn't been a negative play. Yeah. I mean, that, right? In, 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 in at least in a series. one At least one negative play in a series. Sure. That's uh, we'll, we'll check that for you. Crum here on the carry. Nice job. Crum gets free. Flag is thrown. Crum goes in for the touchdown. And we'll see if it stands. There is a flag back on the 29-yard line. Player lost his helmet as well. The offensive lineman, Stefano Millen, he's without his helmet. Crum went in for the touchdown. There is a flag thrown. Let's sort it out. Holding offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty remains first down. That's on Millen. Seven must leave the game for one play. Coming off. Now he's got to go out. When Millen is all over the defender and the two of them went to the ground, this was a, an easy call for the head referee. You see 67 there right on the left side of your screen. Gets the hands on the outside. You get the hands on the outside, you start tugging at that shoulder pad. They're going to get you. Back to Rankin after the penalty. Second and 22 now for Kent State. Millen's back in after his helmet comes off. You have to come out for a play, and now Crum. Taking off here with second down, getting inside the 25, the 10, and hit hard inside the 10 yard line. It's setting up first and goal now for Kent State. Under three minutes to play, and that run is the longest play from scrimmage tonight 28 yards by the quarterback. Well, Akron better start coming up with some answers for the quarterback run because they're seeing an awful lot of this quarterback draw, and they don't have enough numbers in the box to defend it. Crum does a good job of navigating the blocks, showing some patience, and then breaking the play to the outside. Now, he's not sudden, but he's deceptively fast once he gets on a straight line and starts gaining some momentum, getting him out of a big hole there. First and goal, Rankin, and he's taken down after a couple and tackled by John Laco. From Chuck Amato, I'm going to force this quarterback to get the ball to the outside, and I'm plugging every gap on the inside. Well, Crum is certainly to give them something to think about with his ability to no doubt. football. And now down here, there's a lot of options mm -hmm. for Kent State. Second down, Crum wants to run again. And is going to throw, and the pass is caught at the one-yard line. And that, for the first time tonight, is Mike Kerrigan. And another flag is down. It's in the end zone. Kerrigan believes he has the catch, but there is a flag in the end zone as well. Ball is placed inside the one. And they try to sort this out. If this ends up, yep, it's going to be a hold. Well, when Crum was scrambling, rolling to the right, and you've got these receivers being covered, and they're jockeying for position, trying to get open in the back of that end zone. Get some jostling and some jerseys being tugged. play of this drive longest drive by either team tonight holding defense that penalty will be declined result of the play third down first down instead it's third down at the that's interesting one yard line absolutely and why would why would you take the play that would have put you at first down fresh set of downs inside the five it, exactly it would be a first down now, if you don't get it, 
Well, it's Rankin lined up to take the direct snap here. Third down from the one-yard line. He's going to throw the pass, and it is caught in the end zone. Shelfonte Butler, touchdown Kent State. He said we had that call all along. Right? Yeah, we got it. We know what we're doing. Guess that sideline decision to not take the penalty there paid off here and, and well executed. Nice job by Rankin uh, to get that ball up and out. A little pop pass. Looked like it was going to be the direct snap. A little quarterback power. Good execution. First touchdown of the season for Butler thrown by the running back Rankin. And it's a 10-point ball game here. One minute and 20 seconds to go in the third. Kent State trying to make a game of it. They're down by only 10 points here tonight. And at this matchup between these two, here's the last play. Here's what we have is we have three flags thrown on the field. Extracurricular. That's the play. We have offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Kicking team. Number 57. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Receiving team. Number 52. Those penalties will offset. That's 52 and 57's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on this game. You get two, you're tossed. Or if you get a flagrant unsportsmanlike penalty, which we had tonight, you get tossed immediately as John Cunningham did number 90 for Kent State earlier tonight. Take a look here at this conduct after the play. Yep. It's finished. A little hands to the face there. Everyone caught that one. Yep. How about the yards this quarter? Kent State with 126. Akron with minus 15. I mean, the Zips. They have to watch it here, Tom. They, yeah. They're up by 10, but you have another sequence like you did and another touchdown, three-point ball game, and it's not quite as in hand as you once thought. No doubt. they got to get back to running the football, get some balance back in their offense. Van Edwards in the backfield. Nelson is going to keep it, and he slips. His clock winding down here in the third quarter. If you're Akron on offense right now, you need to be milling around, taking your time, watching that play clock, but running your offense. Don't change your offense. Run your offense, but do it at a much slower pace. Be deliberate and win in the trenches. Second down and eight, Nelson again, the keeper, and has space this time, and he's going to get the first down run to the 40-yard line. It's really the same play that they call on first down. He just tripped, and he's had the same open lane there, bouncing the play to the perimeter. That time, Cato Nelson able to keep his feet. Going to see the right guard, Kyle Ritz, 66, pull around. Cato Nelson does a nice job. Being patient, key in the block, and then bouncing the play to the perimeter. That's going to be the end of the third quarter, so three in the books here, and Akron with a 10-point advantage. It'll be third and long, so not the way to start this fourth quarter for Akron. Just a 10-point lead. It's not safe here with all this time still left. Number two, an undefeated Miami comes your way on Friday. After Thanksgiving, when they take out Pittsburgh at noon on ABC. Don't miss that. Also, streaming live at ESPN app. Nelson, shot downfield. Again, a receiver stepped out of bounds. And Quadarius Smith. Third time that's happened. Flag is down on the field. Offside, defense, number 53. Five yard penalty, third down. And that still only puts you at third and 10, but also. The same issue in the downfield passing game for Akron, attempting the low percentage throw down the sideline into the boundary with a receiver that's being forced off the field and down the sideline. He's running into the white of the Akron bench. Well, you got Kent State playing press coverage. Sure. And all the receivers here. Well, this receiver's got to stay in bounds, though. Can somebody win a one on one matchup? Exactly. Nelson gets away, 
and will not get away for long. Finally brought down 35-yard line. Jim Jones again and Marcus Moore. Same combination. Forces a punt on the opening series of the fourth quarter by Akron. And that series started by trying to throw the football in first and ten after they'd had such success running the ball. And here they are forced to throw it, an obvious passing down. Pressured once again, Cato Nelson trying to do the best job he can to avoid the rush, but goes down, takes another loss. And this Akron offense has not been the same since the opening drive of the night. Flags before the kick by Gasser. They really have to thank Gasser for the night he's had to help field Fire position. Staff. Ball start. Offense. Number seven. Five yard penalty. Mains fourth down. Well, that doesn't help, but Nick Gasser punting tonight has really done a nice job of flipping the field and making it tougher on Kent State. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. In fact, he's been the one bright spot that's given Akron a chance on defense. See if they come after him and try to get a piece of this one. They do not. Cavius Price, fair catch called for and made at the 27 yard line. Fair catch is made at the 28 yard line. We'll be back. Carolina's going to be much more competitive than it was a year ago. Catch State on offense with Rankin on the carry and gets up close to the 35 yard line, about three yards shy of a first down. So now, if you're Kent State, you've got. Tons of time remaining. You have made some mistakes here tonight, but you're looking better. Down 10. What are you seeing here on this possession? Well, I'm hoping on this next down I'm not going to see a negative play. Okay. Because that's what we've become accustomed to seeing after a positive gain on first down. Both of these offenses have struggled to get in line on second down. Pass goes out to the outside to rank it. And he's hitting the backfield for a loss. And there you go, Tom. You <laughs> just mentioned it. Listen, I, you know, we've talked about this all night, and it's unfortunate, but uh, this is the 14th drive for Kent State. To this point, both Kent State and Akron, as you see the ball out to Rankin here in the flat and the tackle for negative yardage, just three of 13 possessions for both Akron and Kent State have not had a negative play. Just three of 13, and some of those have been huge plays. Behind the chains all night, and Crum is dropped to the backfield. And that was Ulysses Gilbert. What a night he's had. It's been the difference maker on defense for them. He has been. He's been all over the place. You see him on the delayed blitz through the B gap there between the guard and the tackle. He's got some closing burst, uh, some good third down value as well. Really good player, just a junior out of Florida. Derek Adams punts for A.J. Coney, who lets this one go out of bounds and not a good kick. And, and he shanked it. Yes, he did. And Akron's going to have amazing field position. 44-yard line on Kent State's side of the field. Got Akron in this position to have a chance to head to the Marathon MAC Championship with a win tonight. Just has not been productive through the air, on the ground, a lot of negative plays, including turnovers. You see that yards total? If you had just looked at the yards total, I know that's not always indicative <laughs> of the game, but you'd be like, oh, man, Akron's losing this game. No, they're up by 10. Yeah. They've been out game by 100 yards tonight. Here's Van Edwards. It's going to be third down and six, maybe seven for the Zips. Thanks to the defense, two interceptions by Akron. And then that strip fumble by Ulysses Gilbert at the end of the first half. And that's how they're really leading by 10 here tonight. Yeah. Now they got to hang on, milk that clock, somehow come up with a way to run the football. Got to get this play right. Third down and seven. 14 points off turnovers by Akron tonight. It's been the difference. Nelson and the design keeper goes for a yard. Jim Jones and Elvis Hines. They wouldn't be thinking about going for it here at all, would you? And no, I think with the, ball, right? yeah, the way your punter has played, Nick Gasser has saved you tonight by putting your defense on an extremely long field. He's had two punts go out of bounds on the five yard line. Let's see if he can do it again. Kent State's shown no semblance of right. being able to sustain a drive outside of one time this entire ball. I mean, that thought only crept into my mind because it just seemed like a nonchalant run for Nelson for a yard or two. Right. Thinking maybe we'll set something up for a fourth and short, but no. It's punt time here for Gasser. And Cavius Price has his feet at the 10-yard line. 
goes over his head. He should let it go. That's the rule. The unwritten rule anyway. And this ball lands out of bounds and marked at the eight. Gasser has pinned Kent State in corners here as we're almost midway through the fourth. As the fans get into it here, they're looking to try to get this win to go to the MAC championship game. Kent State hanging around, but they're going to be deep in their own territory to start this drive. Crum. And nothing doing here on first down. Brian Ranke for Akron on the tackle. Yeah, I, I think that right now the way Golden State has chosen to continue to emphasize the quarterback run, uh, I think Chuck Amato at Akron is doing a nice job plugging these gaps. He's going to load up the box, dare Kent State to throw it. you got an inexperienced quarterback backed up. Uh, in his own 10 yard inside his own 10 yard line. Don't allow him to beat you on the ground. Make him make the difficult play. Crum again, looking for breathing room. Gang tackled before the 15 yard line. It'll be third down and four. Kyron Brown, who got banged up earlier, good to see him back in, makes the play for Akron on defense. Yeah, Kyron Brown, important piece of that puzzle for. Akron's defense, the entire secondary, including U Ulysses Gilbert at the middle linebacker position. He, he has been uh, the go-to guy tonight, been all over this field, came in to the season, the leading tackler, and had a monster night here trying to get them to the Marathon Mac Championship game. Crum again gets away, and he's going to run for it and has the first down. Crum still on his feet. Wrestled down at the 28-yard line by Ulysses Gilbert. 14-yard gutsy run by Kent State's quarterback. Boy, he made a play when he had to, and you almost feel like you, you knew it was coming. Nothing there in the passing game, so they cloud the issue Akron does in the secondary. Good pressure. And this kid's slithery. He just finds ways to move the chains. Really good tackle there by Gilbert, number five, who we just spoke of. Well, Crum has been the spark that they needed. The pass is incomplete off the hands of Mike Kerrigan. Nearly picked off. Crum now has 81 yards rushing this half. And it's been a huge spark since coming in for George Bolas. Well, it was the correct read right here. It's just an inaccurate throw over the middle. If he puts this thing on the numbers or a foot in front of the numbers, allows Kerrigan to continue to run across the middle of the field. Like his poise, good platform, drives the ball. Just not accurate with the end result. Second down and 10. 6.47 to go. Fourth quarter. Rankin. And shut down. One yard, if that. And here we go. Third down and long. All right, Lukes. You've got to force this quarterback to throw the ball. However you choose to come after him, you better have tremendous lane integrity. I would not rush past the level of the quarterback so that he can dip underneath and find an open front door. Be very careful with your rush lanes here. Crum, and they are, they've got him. This job by Akron. Who else but Gilbert, along with John Laco, and he was there as well. Lanko, yeah, and, and look at Gilbert, comes from the opposite side linebacker in the wide gap off of the right side of the offensive line, and they had everything plugged. There was nowhere as I spoke for the quarterback to take the football, no open lanes. Very well done by Akron defensively. Fifth sack of the night by Akron. They almost got to the punter Adams there. Coney covers it up. It's almost blocked. It's going to be Akron football in their own territory now. 36 yard line here, 533 to go. And what really hasn't been the case by either team tonight, sustaining drives. But that's what you would hope for if you're Akron here to try to take some time off the clock. If you're Akron here, Mike, run, 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 and keep running. And you know what? If you don't get a first down, punt the ball because you're playing great defense. And then force them to have to worry about the clock, have to worry about timeouts. But the biggest thing is don't put the ball in the air and don't take negative plays if you're Cato Nelson in this Akron offense. 
Dan Edwards, he gets the call. And wrestled down by Theo Majet, gain of five. Line up, play clock to 38 seconds, let it get down to about three or four. Run the football again. Now you're going to put Kent State in a position on that sideline to have to start thinking about when they're going to use their timeouts, even if they're not on offense. But you're absolutely right about the play clock. Get that thing down as much as you can. If they snap this with less than five seconds, you have to wonder, what are they doing? Absolutely. Right? And they're going to. Look at this. They're going to snap the ball here. Looks like they are, and then he needs to take way more time. Here we go. Now go. we right. got it going. Still even could have let a few more seconds go, and Nelson is going to have the first down. That's big. Yep, 47-yard line, chain will move here, fresh set of downs, 441. All right, that clock now, fresh set of downs, they'll spot the ball, it's already moving. Now the key for this Akron offense, and this is a really nice job with the uh, lead draw of the quarterback out of the direct snap, but now you've got to keep that ball between the numbers. If you have a run that bounces to the edge, fall down, stay in bounds, keep the clock running, force Kent State to worry about the clock. Snap that with four on the play clock. Goes to Edwards, spinning and getting the first and much more inside Kent State territory to the 37 yard line. And you call it, Larry Lutz just run, run, run. 16 yards on that game. Yeah, I, I love the approach here. Uh, they got the quarterback understanding the moment. Hand the football off, rely on your offensive line. Really good job at the point of attack. You slip a missed tackle there from Kent State on defense. Number 22, Jim Jones misses the, the point of attack. And now you use that play clock, and again, force Kent State to use their timeouts. Injury to Marcus Moore on defense for Kent State. All right, so the clock is at 350. This fourth quarter. And it's a 10 point lead for Akron. Thanksgiving morning, start your day with first take at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. They'll get you ready for all three NFL games, plus preview college football's rivalry weekend. And there'll be some Turkey Day surprises. It's all coming up first take, 10 a.m. Eastern, Thursday morning on ESPN. Also streaming live at the ESPN app. First down, Akron, 37-yard line of Kent State, waiting for that play clock to wind down. Good job again to snap it down with about four seconds as Edwards runs and breaks free for another first down. All of a sudden, you know, Kent State knows the run of the ball, yep. and they can't stop they them. Can't stop. This has been the best-looking Akron you know, offensively here tonight. And, and really, it's because they've actually lined up and attempted to do it. Yeah. They had abandoned the run game for a good two and a half quarters, decided to throw the football for whatever reason, and once again, they've just gone to this well so often here on this drive with Edwards on the inside zone, and credit this Akron offensive line, Steven Erickson, Kyle Ritz on that right side, Brandon Council, the left guard, the 56 in the interior of Akron's front, taking care of the point of attack. First down, and Edwards again. And he'll get just one yard. But you're absolutely right, Luz. First four drives this half, minus 10 yards for Akron. This drive has amassed 43 yards. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just curious. So they've got one timeout left. 2.16 on the clock. Win tonight for Akron. And they head to the Marathon MAC Championship game and the standings. You now, this is how they were able to do this. They beat Ohio right. last week in a game which they were trailing. Huge come from behind win. If they win tonight, they win the East. And then it sets up some pretty good matchups on uh, Friday with Toledo.
In uh, Northern Illinois, they have a shot over on that side. Yeah, technically three teams mathematically involved. Central Michigan, a lot of things would have happened for them, but Toledo, Northern Illinois is what it will come down to. And Akron holds on here. They'll be in the Marathon MAC Championship game for the first time since 2005. Toledo clinches with a win. Northern Illinois clinches with a win and a loss. And also Central Michigan, like you said, with a ton of help. So third down and seven now as it's Van Edwards. Gets inside the 10-yard line. He fumbles the football, and he got Van it back. Edwards. First down for Akron at the nine-yard line. Not only did he fumble the football, he also went out of bounds, which stops the clock. It's a really good run by Edwards here, slipping underneath the defensive end. 45, Marquise Moore. Then he fumbles the ball. In fact, a little surprised that that ball got blown as being out of bounds without the clock continuing to run, unless they're saying he regained possession. I think they he's they said he did because the clock yep there we go down to 140 and ticking play clock they need to snap this and oh. Edwards wrestled down to the Edwards. six and we're under a minute and a half to go take this all the way down to 50 seconds left this next snap of the football. Only one timeout left for Kent State. Well, if they're going to use it, I'm assuming they're going to use it after this next yep. play. A lot, of, a lot of clock burning off here. Edwards. And stopped right on the spot. Kent State is pretty much going to do it. This is going to do it. Kent State opting not to use yep. their last time out. Yep, that's all. Wagon wheel. It's going to stay with the Akron Zips. They're going to defeat Kent State 24 to 14 as they race after it in their end zone. And they advance to the MAC championship game for the first time since 2005, winning the East Division. How about it tonight? Well, it wasn't pretty, uh, but Akron did with.